This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Check out the affiliate link down below to help support, support the show. Wow, do we need to do it again? No, like, that, that was, was perfect. Know, that was, that was sweet. great. Well, welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. I'm Tyler. And this week, we are going to be talking about a very specific type of card. It's a bounce spell. Bounce spell. Bounce spells. We're going to do a whole podcast just about bounce spells in CEDH. We have Tyler here again, so we have to talk about a very blue mechanic and talk about mostly (laughs) blue cards. Should we talk about why bounce spells are good in CEDH? Because I feel like they're way better in CEDH and Commander than they are in other formats. I would Probably. definitely agree. So what is a bounce spell is the first question I would ask. That's a great That's a great first question. Can I, can I tell you the, the definition that I have for bounce spell? Yes, please do. It's a spell that temporarily deals with a permanent by returning it to another zone where it can be recast. I object to this definition. I All also right. object. Tyler right. first. Okay. Um, I would say that uh, bouncing a spell off the stack is also a bounce spell. And mm-hmm. I'm okay. thinking of unsubstantiate okay. here. Sure. I still would classify that as a bounce effect even when what it's doing is more akin to a counter spell. But well, you're it, lucky that's on the list already. What so if we'll it talk doesn't? That. What if it doesn't bounce? What, what if it doesn't have the option to bounce a permanent? Like something like remand. Is remand a bounce spell? Uh, I'm gonna say no because remand acts more as a counter spell. Okay. So I'm gonna call that a counter spell. And not a bounce spell. It acts like a counter spell. I don't know. I think I would still call remand a bounce spell. To me, the most important effect of a bounce spell is that the thing that is being removed or disrupted is going back to hand instead of to a, another zone. Yeah, okay. I think that's true. Yeah, to hand. That was another thing that I was going to object to about yours. I don't think you mentioned to hand specifically. To me, bounce means to Oh, hand. no, because I put to another zone because there is a card on here that puts uh, this spell in exile Maybe so you that you can, can still recast it. Are you trying to tell me that you think Soul Partition is a bounce spell? Well, what else is it, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> I think... So here's my here's what I'm going to say about it. I think bounce spells have to go to hand. I think we can bend the rules sometimes for cards like that. But to me, bounce means to hand. Well, we'll come across a couple of other things that will bend the rule. And we'll see how once you learn what they are, you can break the rules, right? I feel yeah. like that's what they are. Rules are meant to be broken. You got to know we'll, them first. Yeah. yeah. It's so like we'll, music theory. You have to learn the yes. rules and then you're allowed to break that's them. That's literally what I was thinking of. of I feel like all were. of us just... Yep. I, I talk about that with video all the time. I know the rules, so I know how to make our videos look bad on purpose. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> that's what's happening. They're bad on purpose. Yes, that's what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. just start doing this professionally a couple months ago. You all didn't right. lose footage. It got bounced. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I never lose footage. Yeah, it gets bounced. That game is coming back. <laughs> all right, so the last question I have before we talk about any of these spells, are we ranking these or are we just talking about them? Yeah. Like we should we give them a ranking you number. You guys are obsessed with ranking. Like, uh, uh, Clearly, we have to rank them. <laughs> Yeah. That's just like how my brain works. I have to optimize. I have to figure out what's the best and what's the worst. Right. We're, of course, going to talk about reasons why some of them are situationally better than others. But I think still giving them a number ranking is going to make me feel good about definitely stamping my opinion, which is never wrong on there. Exactly. So, We've never been wrong. We've never been wrong. We I haven't s- been wrong yet. We but- spit facts and truth, <laughs> and I can't dispute anything else oh sure <laughs> all right great great you got a card uh chain of vapor chain of vapor start at the top start well, why not? <laughs> I, I, not? I chain of vapor might not be the top you're not I, the top it's definitely close to the top it, oh my god like, right like for me it's a it's an auto include at, at least, least to top consider. three for sure yeah we, we, this is one of the very few one mana ones that we're going to end up talking about which is why it's so good mm-hmm. being able to bounce any permanent is also a big part of the reason why it's so good we're going to talk not about a land a, permanent right uh Yes, you're right. Non-land permanent. We're going to talk about a lot of different restrictions that some of these spells might have throughout the course of this podcast here today. Yeah, I, I feel like to, Boomerang should have been like the first one that we we started with because Boomerang is bounce the target OG. permanent. It's the OG. It's yeah, the original. I, that doesn't come up. I haven't seen that no, ever right. in yeah, CED. Yeah, okay, Does right. Boomerang predate Unsummon or is Unsummon you know what? first? Now that I'm thinking, I, I, when I said that out loud, I immediately wasn't sure Unsummon might have come first, but Boomerang is like a bounce any permanent, so I feel like... Is it two blue? Is that it's what it is? blue blue, yeah. yeah. Fact so, checker? So Unsummon, what is this? Is available in Alpha, it looks like. Yeah, okay, yeah, Unsummon was first. Unsummon is the original. I, I should learn how to spell Boomerang. 
Is anyone surprised I can't spell Boomerang? <laughs> I, I'm a little surprised, Cameron. <laughs> Boomerang came around in Legends. It was okay, actually. so it was way late. I just I'm, I match it more towards the rest of the spells that we're going to be talking about today because yeah. it's a two mana bounce anything, whereas Unsummon is a creature and that is not good enough. Chain of Vapor, non land, that's basically anything. Not only that, you can bounce your own stuff so you can replay your rocks by sacrificing all of your lands. The land sacrifice feed to Underworld Breach. There's a ton more. What do you got to say about this card? Well, I think I think let's let's. Zoom in a little bit on the whole thing of you can bounce your own permanence because this is definitely yeah that's how you zoom in it's manually telephotoing lensing your eyes with your hands exactly uh, or you're Seeing that a lot or you're different. that monster from Guillermo del Toro film whatever the hell that was Pan's Labyrinth Pan's oh Labyrinth. no that's this one too uh, I want to get eyes tattooed on my hands so badly because of that guy in Pan's Labyrinth think like this wow <laughs> the like fucking horror try hard of the mustache on the finger tattoo yes like, exactly great. big time <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you have your Halloween costume set for the rest Every of your year. life. Yeah, now. this guy forever. We're talking about bounce spells. <laughs> okay, bounce spells. Today Back we're talking to about bounce spells. Chain of Vapor. That's what we're talking about. Yes. With Chain of Vapor, you can target your own permanents, which is awesome. But if you're targeting an opponent's thing, then they also get to potentially sack to bounce one of yours. It's hard to evaluate if it is, you know, so good to bounce your own permanents once in a while. Usually Dockside is like the top thing, uh, top of mind. Um, if it is so good that it is just worth... Um, calling it a wash, or if the whole your things can be bounced um, when your opponent sacks a land is like bad enough that it kind of drags the spell down. Yeah. I don't know. What do you De think? Yeah, definitely. There are times when are, if you're a very permanent based combo, you don't really want Chain of Vapor as much because a lot of the times they'll just be able to bounce your permanence in response and it'll set you back, which is less good. Um, I, so I think there are situations like that when you're like heavy permanent based yourself that you don't want to use Chain of Vapor. Um, but Dockside, you mentioned Dockside. Yeah. That's a big Ugh. reason for Chain of Vapor. And it's a big reason why all of these bounce spells I think are so played is because of Dockside. Yeah. Most of these spells that we're going to talk about are just Dockside bouncers that have some other upside right. here. It's it's a flexible yeah. removal slot that can help you win with Dockside Extortionist. Well, I want to say I think you guys are overvaluating the downside of chain of vapor because i found that in most scenarios i still want it like even Definitely. in oh, even so, in scenarios yeah. where like i was playing jessica ishai and a lot of jessica ishai players were cutting chain of vapor because it felt bad to bounce your ishai don't lean in so hard on ishai and like do something else too right, yeah. a lot of times um you can just use it on like end of turn and then that's uh, at the best time for you to be able to just untap caster spells too um especially after you've already got like the rule of law out of play now so definitely yeah so i love chain of vapor a ton what's our rating Can i'm gonna say one more thing about chain of vapor yes before oh, we rate God. it yeah of course um, i think this gets um underplayed um not it doesn't get played too little index what i mean is using it to target not the right thing that's about to win the game but to target an opponent's thing that is also helping them get ahead with the knowledge that they must sacrifice a land to not lose the game on the spot if you're bouncing a kiki jiki or something like this is a really good tempo play where you get to do something to one of your other opponents and then put the pressure on them to say you now have to stop this it and can be sometimes really they will and sometimes they won't depending right. on <laughs> the pod that you're in and yeah. who you're playing against so right. uh, but honestly that you i'm glad you you said that because that's like the number one appeal to chain of vapor is because you can do things like that you can make it work as a two for one um yeah super good point you just have to make sure that your opponent is is gonna do it you know what i mean like they are aware that they're going to lose the game in advance explain them you will, will lose. lose the game and yeah. don't do that even though technically i guess you could still don't <laughs> yeah, say take your lumps yeah. you just have to be okay with whatever they say you have to you ha the goal has to be to not lose the game you have to try to win the game you need so if you if the option is there even if someone screws you over by hitting your thing i think you still have to bounce the game winning spell i would definitely i'm gonna give chain of vapor a 4.5 out of 5 I will give it a seven out of eight. Okay. Why are you guys like this? Do you <laughs> have to? Seven. All right, so it can has you a do the math on what's the difference at a four point five Tyler, versus a seven out of eight? On a scale from violet to green, a what, what are you going to give it? No, I have four. What did you say? A four out a of four point five. five out of five. Four point five out of five versus a seven out of eight. Which one is technically a higher? Well, you need percent. the common denominator, which is forty, right? So if the highest common denominator is forty, then you're talking about thirty-five out of forty versus uh, four point five times eight is. What, uh, 32, 34? 34 out of 40. So you rated it higher than me. So I, I rated it higher than you. Okay, yeah, sure, that makes sense. <laughs> and then Tyler, what, you what, you me? <laughs> Tyler what are you rating it? Oh, um, really tempted to say 69 out of 420 now. Yeah. And now that you guys set, the, that set one, the, write that down. 69 divided by 
420. I would say out of all the bounce spells we've talked about so far, being just Chain of Vapor, this one's the best, though. This one's definitely the best. And then the next contender is going to come in. If we're, if we're rating it out of five, by the way, for the record, I just straight up give it a five out of five. I think this just is... Just give it a five out of five. This is definitely, tier. like, the yeah. best one. For me, it's tied with the, the first one that I go to. I almost always go to this one and one more that I'm sure we'll get to, but Chain of Vapor goes in all my blue decks. See, to me, there's no five out of five, because a five out of five would be a one-mana bounce spell that bounces any permanent with no downside. It would be so. boomerang, but for one blue but instead for of one blue. blue. Exactly. So you're like so. holding a slot open that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, and this is how you're I'm one of those works. teachers that will never give you a 100 because <laughs> it could it always, always be better. better. <laughs> always could have been better. Wow. Uber drivers hate this one trick. Like, well, it wasn't the best ride I've ever received that I haven't had yet. Four stars. Alchemist Retrieval. This, this one's okay. This is a newer one. I really like this as a, if, if you're uh, trying to bounce your dock side, it only costs one mana to hit your dock side. Off of the ad nauseum, that's kind of nice because it has a one mana pip, right? Correct. So it, yeah, it hits one for mana one less. Pip. Not a huge deal, but. But for an additional mana, you can also hit your opponent's thing in case they're going to win the game. You now have some disruption too. Yeah, I'm surprised this doesn't see a little more play. But I also don't play it in a in a two color blue deck, so I you know maybe maybe it just doesn't feel quite close enough a lot of the time. Man, quick you're not bouncing dock side enough. Quick slight deviation. How many bounce spells do you normally play in your decks? We should have oh, said that at first. I that's think, a good but. question. I guess it de it depends on my deck. If I I'm probably playing two or three a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. What, I don't know what normally means, but I, yeah, I think two or three feels about right. Do you know how, offhand how many you have in Kinnon? Ooh, that's, that's a very good question. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, I, assuming we're not counting Hellbreak or Horror and Tide Spot Tyrant as bounce yeah, spells, I, I would have bounced them. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just two. Honestly, it might be closer to three or four because as we get down to some of these other ones, I think I think we'll might find that there's like three and four of them in our decks a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm a two. I'm a two or three. If I have Dock Side, I'm a three. If I have no Dock Side, I'm a two. Normally, that's my roundabout rule. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Great. All right. Um, Alchemist Retrieval. Really. Okay. So it's it, all right. It's kind of vanilla. I think it's a three. Out of five, really. How many out of eight are you going to give it? Two. <laughs> six out of 14 this time. Six out of 14? Okay, so six. No. Um, I, I don't think it's... That, I think it's worse than Chain of Vapor. That's the rating that I'll give it. That's three seven. Yeah, okay. You know what? Six you know out of 14 long? was better six than just Six out of 14 and worse. worse than Chain of Vapor. The next one is Wins of a reduced <laughs> fraction. That, <laughs> no, just that's, three out of seven. Those numbers are so funny to me for oh, some reason. I can't stand you. <laughs> Do you want to give it a rating? What? Oh, yeah, I guess so. I, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, Alchemist Retrieval is like a two out of five for me. I think yeah. two out of five. Mm. I think that's fair. I really liked it. Oh, but I'm thinking two out of five of ones that we would actually talk about. Are we, are we rating like uh, there's ones eight, that are actually bad? There's no, there is, there's eighteen spells that are the actually seen that play in CDH. Sense. We just need to rate them against each other. That's I feel like that should be the rating. Okay, if I'm rating them against the ones I expect to hear in this list, I'm saying 2 out of 5 for okay, Alchemist Retrieval. <laughs> I, it's worse than Chain of Vapor. It's, it's 2 out of out of 2 right now. Did you say 2 out of 2? That means it's a 100. No! No. Oh my god. All right. Can we move on? <laughs> Half this podcast is just going to be arguing about what these <laughs> fucking numbers are. And Did you just nothing mispronounce too, it, are you wing? I'm trying to type and speak at the same time. Do you know how hard that is? Yes. There's so many different fucking letters in my brain from different channels. I can't handle it. So many letters in my brain. That's so funny. All right. Winds of Rebuke. We're only on our third fucking Winds bounce Winds of Rebuke. Spell. Okay. This is a two-mana one that gets any non-land permanent, but it also mills everybody for two, so it can fuck up top deck tutors and help you feel your underworld breach. I think this one is pretty good. Um, even though Alchemist Retrieval for one targeting your own thing is nice, I think the like weird upsides to this one are, are situationally relevant about as often. Um, so I probably think it's about on par. I think if you're playing an Underworld Breach deck, this is what you want. And if you're not playing an Underworld Breach deck, maybe you'll choose one of the other 18 options that we have on the list. Yeah, on paper, this one seems really good. The top deck tutor seems really relevant. It's just, it's hard to time that out perfectly. I don't think that should be a real pull to this card. It's going to happen once in a while, but not enough to make it realistic. I think the milling two cards with Underworld Breach is helpful. If you can utilize that in some type of loop to help mill your library or help mill you some cards to fuel something, I think it can be okay, but it's definitely the third or even fourth bounce option a lot of the times. Yeah, I would say if you're playing you, it. Yeah, I would think so too. Um, I would also give this one a three because it serves a purpose. Yeah, I'm also saying two out of five for this one. Just like uh, two just out of like five retrieval. for this one. Worse than Alchemist Retrieval. Okay, so I'm gonna have you say that that was a two, and I give you a three for Alchemist Retrieval. That sounds right. The next one is Cyclonic Rift. 
Well, this who, this one doesn't let you bounce your own dock side, but it can potentially bounce everyone else's everything. This has been a favorite card of mine for so since it was printed, really. Yeah. Because as soon as you start playing it, even in casual, you start thinking in terms of for all other board wipes, for all other things that deal with a bunch of stuff at once, is it as good as Cyclonic Rift? And the answer is always no. Yeah. An always overloaded no, Rift yeah. is just it deals with. Everything except for a spell on the stack. But Honestly, there was a while where it doesn't matter. All of that shit. Yeah. yeah, there was a while where I stopped playing it for a hot second in CEDH because I was like, oh man, this isn't gonna come up too much. And then I got into like so many stacked out scenarios where I was like, you know, the only thing that gets me out of this board state is if I have a cyclonic rift and I can go end a turn, do that, and win the game. Yeah, I kind of view it as a necessary evil. Almost a seven mana thing isn't gonna come up a ton, but when it is, it's gonna help win the game. It's so gonna be much. so you bad breaking. Yeah, I mean, you're a kid and just comes. <laughs> <laughs> for you all the time obviously yeah, um, but the reason yeah it not bouncing your own dock side is kind of a relevant thing when considering bounce spells i think for a while i think we were all extra high on as many bounce spells as possible since then realizing that no the rift is just as important even though you can't bounce a dock side but to me this is still like a five out of five this is can we also acknowledge tier. there's a tiny little silver lining to not being able to bounce your own dock side this is not a spell that can be deflecting swatted onto your own permanence that's and true it, it comes up it's not never yeah. it's not a huge consideration but it doesn't matter yeah, yeah it is something if you overloaded it doesn't matter but mm, yeah that's i think what, yeah, there's a lot of baby riffs that are all. cast um i gave it a 4.5 because when Your same dumb rule it's my Wait, not you, even that i mean it's just so good if you overloaded it doesn't matter what you mean with deflecting spot yeah deflecting spot doesn't gain control of the spell it just allows you to change the target but so, there's no more targets all the cases of target are changed to any and all or whatever yeah so it's still it does exactly the same thing it was gonna do if you try, if you deflecting spot an overloaded rift it does nothing the deflecting so, spot doesn't do so anything. you're saying i'm right in that you can't no, oh is that what you were saying i thought yeah, you were I implying said, he meant that he said it wrong in a oh, confusing way oh, okay. yeah no i you you made I it said, i said you can't swat an overloaded one well you didn't exactly say that <laughs> i don't know what you said <laughs> Either way, let's we get, move past it. Kevin, we're you're gonna, you're going to get a 61 it. out of 200 on explaining your thoughts on that. That sounds on, great. Yeah, I think Tyler's great. right about this. <laughs> All right, so, so what do you guys give in Cyclonic Rift? Five out of five. 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 Yeah, Easy. 100 out of 100. Five. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Better than Chain of Vapor. To me, Better, they're, to me, they're it's both exactly, 100%. <laughs> exactly the same, basically. Yeah. Um, <sighs> the same tough. power level. That's I guess true. That you, gave, you gave it. You gave Chain of Vapor a seven eighths. So did I? Yeah, yeah, seven out of eight. Wow! Remember, you made me fucking do the math and figure out what yeah. they're seven that was for Chain of Vapor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I have used Cyclonic Rift better than Chain of Vapor. I don't know. The ceiling is feels higher. The ceiling is so much higher. Yeah, but seven mana is so much mana. So like, the ceiling fucking better be much higher, right? And you, know what? a lot of decks aren't red. That's a lot of true. decks don't play red, so they really don't give a shit about bouncing a dock side. I think Cyclonic Rift is better, but it's close, which sounds weird. I feel like if you're a casual player listening in who's not a CDH player, Cyclonic Rift is like obviously the most powerful card, but I think in yeah. CDH it's much closer. Yeah. So I would say that bouncing everyone's everything comes up much more often than using your um, Chain of Vapor as a ritual than having it really matter. That's true. Yeah. You have to have a very specific board. You have to have a lot of rocks, so... I would I would agree. I'm gonna give Cyclonic Rift a four point eight. Four point eight. Right, and we're gonna so move on more higher than higher than chain of vapor. Higher than chain. Okay. Snap. Snap's really good. Snap. Snap is your dockside bouncer that can only bounce creatures, but it lets you untap your, your Gaia's cradle too. Sure does. Your Gaia's cradle, your ancient tomb, your city of traders, anything you want to untap. Your, Hell yeah. Yeah. Your cabal coffers, like all that sure. shit. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you want your, to. Your basic forest and your non-basic forest this one is really good because if you need to get rid of a stacks piece post ad nauseum and you only have two mana snapping it to then be also able to use that two mana again to start your combo off with an underworld breach or something like that is really helpful oh yeah allowing it to be basically free mana as long as you have that two mana is super good i mean you you love this card you play guys like also cradle. plays really nice with dock side because it yes. uh, gives you the two mana at, at minimum that you need to recast the dock side so strong the free bounce but spell. i don't play it in kinnon you don't play it in kinnon no oh. i don't run it you can't bounce a dock side with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, why would you? That's yeah. why. Yeah. That's what this card screams to me. Like, I play Cradle and Dock Side in my deck, so yeah. I play Snap. I think I agree. Yeah, if you're meeting both of those criteria, yeah. you're playing Snap. Because you can't bounce enchantments. You can't bounce artifacts. These are all major downsides that all of the other spells we talked about so far 
can bounce. Yeah. I would give this one a two. Yeah. And especially also being in a, green. A since two out of five. A two out of five. Really Jeez. Yeah. I would I would say I'm probably giving it a three and a half or four. To me, this is right under uh Chain of Vapor and Cyclonicrift. Snap is like next, especially out of the ones we've talked about so far. So I would put it like high, like three and a half, three point eight out of out of five or something. Okay. Three point eight. See, I've started playing other cards over Snap because I think what they do is better, especially if I'm not playing Cradle. I I'll yeah. play Cradle and Thrasy. I'll, I'll play Snap and Thrasios Brews, but um, March of Swirling Mist I have on this list, and this is our first instance of like a rule bend tier Does because it yeah. it go- oh. so it's effectively doing the same thing when you're removing the permanent from play. Uh, audio listeners, I'm yeah. doing air quotes, <laughs> but they um, don't go to another zone, Cameron. They're just phased out. That, I guess phased out the technically phase out is zone, in another yeah, zone. They're not. But it's it's a zone. I can't like, see them. They're yeah. effectively I, I agree not with there. you. I am happy to call this about yeah. spell. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's getting rid of the thing when you need to get rid of it. Yeah. And the upside to not being able to cast it is that you can hit multiple targets as well. Again, they're only Which creatures. Huge. That's such a powerful ability that we don't see that very often in CDH in a castable rate. Oh. If you have extra blue spells, this can be cast for. Like one mana to get rid of a couple things, really good. Yeah, this one definitely is is way up there. I'm now realizing this is also in Kinnon, so I guess I have three. I was thinking I only yeah. had two yeah. in Kinnon. See, I'm telling you, I'm think I think you're gonna realize you have a fourth in there by the time we're done with this podcast. <laughs> I might, yeah. What I also really like about this is like in your ad nauseum decks, it is again only one pip. And post ad nause, if you go to your turn and you now need to deal with like the Ethers One Cannonist and the Avon Mind Sensor, so you can tutor for your win, you have like plenty of cards to be able to pick from. Yeah, the only issue is it, you got to be ready to win when you cast this card because the things are coming back it's not even like they get to recast them again and maybe somebody else will counter them or something like no they are coming back on their opponent's turn so you have to be able to win right away when you're using it that's kind of like the main consideration where some of the other bounce spells are maybe a little bit more forgiving that way still this card's nuts though but you could also look at it as the upside where if you can't win then the stacks pieces are coming back into play preventing everyone else from winning so you don't give your opponent an opportunity to mess up and not play them then that's true yeah. i've done that plenty of times yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely could see that. This one's super powerful. Better than Snap, I think. I think it is, too. Beginning of combat phasing out of Winota also feels yeah, really super good. Powerful. Oh, also true. Yeah. I'm prepared to give March of Swirling Mist to 3.5, only because the timing of phasing can be very weird, and there's times where, oh, I'm going to phase it out like now, but it's not going to really affect anything later. I'm, I'm saying 4.5. on. I'm saying 11 out of 12 on this. <laughs> okay. 11 out of 12. Okay, an 11 out of 12. What did I give Snap? A 3.5 or 3.8? Uh, you gave Snap a 3.8. So I'll give this one a 3.9 out of 5. A three. So you're they're very close in your Actually, eyes. Actually, let's do a 4 out of 5.1. A 4? No, it has to be out of 5. <laughs> we can't extend... <laughs> I had another one out of seven or eight, I thought. No, we are only allowed one. We're all allowed one. <laughs> uh, Tyler just, just used his judge. on 11, <laughs> I wanna, 12. I want four out of 5.1. I'm the judge. I say no. Do you want to just bounce your seven out of eight so that yeah. you can do it this time? Uh, yes. No, Ooh. it's been imprinted. <laughs> we can't change it. What Here is your back. March of Swirling Mist? <laughs> well, let's go 3.9 out of 5. 3.9 out of 5. That's the meanest I've ever had to guys be on the podcast. Scales. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Soul Partition. We have another rule breaker immediately. I would say Bender. I would say this is a Bender, too. Yeah. Yeah. I... I, I guess I guess I can see calling this a yeah. bounce spell. It can get rid of a non-land permanent temporarily because they can cast it again, but it's just a little bit more expensive. I go back to Remand, which like I don't truly think is a bounce spell, but I was kind of making the case for it feels like a bounce spell. And I think this feels like about as much of an outlier as Remand. Not maybe not quite, but very close. I think of it as like a bounce spell for when you're not in blue. Like if you're in Mardu colors, then you have this option, and these colors then also play like Drenith Magistrate a lot of the time. So you also get this like really weird upsides. I agree. Drenith Magistrate, it sure is very very powerful. Yeah, I think that you want to be playing this when you're not playing blue cards. I think I like most bounce spells over it, but if you're not in blue, this is a great option. It yeah. kind of makes it hard to rank because it's like technically like worse than a lot of these blue cards, but in non-blue decks, it's much better. Oh, well, I think it's, I would still rank it at two because it's a very helpful tool, but like you're also in white, which has like swords to plowshares and like some of the other incredible yeah. removal spells and great options. Yeah. 
What did I rank as a two? Something I did. You gave uh, Winds of Rebuke a two. Maybe you gave it a three. I think I think I'm also gonna say two for this. You gave thing. Alchemist Retrieval a two. I know that. Did I? Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna call this a two as well. I this think this is, is a two. two. Yeah, I think it's it's about as strong as those lower powered bounce spells. We finally agreed on one. Wow. Way wow. down the list. Yeah. Wow. Um, we're getting back to one that is also kind of a bend. Uh, this is Submerge. Oh. Because oh, instead of going okay. to your hand, this goes to the top of the library, which is even more devastating. Honestly, yeah. It can this really is be a usually top, called yeah. bounce, even though we yeah. said bounce, we defined it as going to hand. But yeah. yeah okay, I see. I see. Yeah. What's, there's a phrase for it put on top of the library. Not tuck. Tuck's in the bottom of the library. What's the phrase to put it on top? Is there? I thought tuck was usually shuffled into library, not bottom. Maybe you're no, right. No, because the Teferi tuck was when Teferi put himself three down from a library. Hmm. Mm, yeah, so tuck just means go into the library, but it doesn't mean on top. You could tuck it on top, but like if you if you think of it like right. a if you think of it like a bed, you wouldn't tuck yourself in with no covers on top of you. You would have at least one cover on top of you. I'm not sure what that has to do with what we're talking about, but I agree. I'm so really upset tuck. that now I'm like, how many cards does a bed have? Well, there's the mattress and the box spring. It's a four card deck. All right, yeah. great. Yeah, and you tuck yourself in. Submerge is a bounce spell. It's good in some decks. I don't think it's good in ad nauseum decks. It having five mana yeah. pips is the, the bad no. part of it there. But if you're not in black, I think it's considerable. Also, it helps with Thassa's Oracle. It's like one of the few removal spells that if you put Thoracle on top of the library with the trigger still on the stack, you're you're uh, you will have more cards in your library than Devotion to Blue if they don't have, any, have other any other blue, yeah. blue stuff. Yeah. Which is really cool. That's a good point. It can come up there. This is one of the hey watch out cards in Quark Sakashima too, because it's oh, one yeah. of these like free spells that they can just get over and over again and you just sit there and cry. Yep. As your library just grows. What the <laughs> fuck? Is the merge creature only or is it permanent? Creature it's only. creature only. Okay. Yeah, yeah, creature yeah. only. Which is kind of why I want to give this one a two too. Where no, I think it's about where Snap is. To be honest, I'm putting this at a three point five personally. Three point five. Be a little bit worse than Snap. Three point two for me. Three point two. Out of six. Okay. No, that's a three point. Okay, I'm just waiting for one of you guys to do like double digit decimals now, because oh yeah, we should. No, twenty five. No, no, twenty five percent out of fourteen. Twenty five percent out of fourteen. That's no, terrible. You said three point two, and you locked <laughs> that's in. Twenty five percent is point two five. That's terrible. Let it be known that every calculator in Dylan's house has melted in protest. <laughs> like, Can we move on to the next bounce spell? Yeah, I don't know what's happening, so let's move <laughs> on. Snap back, all on the floor. Snap back, give me some more. This, one, this one's great. Yeah, this is a great one. Uh, this is a free bounce spell if you pitch a blue card from your hand. Otherwise, it just bounces a creature. Either way, it just bounces a creature. I have to look at that, but I'm pretty sure snap back just bounces a creature because it's a snap. Yeah, it's a snap. I think this card is a little bit worse than Snap, but in the right turbo deck, Rogsai, I think, can play this card. Some other decks that are looking to go as fast as possible, so as many free spells as possible. I think this one is pretty good. Yeah, can we get the text real quick, just as a reminder? It is It is a creature. Okay. Just a creature. I just looked just it up. Just a creature, yeah. removable card. C correct. Yeah. What is its mana cost if you don't? Two. Remove? Two. One in a blue. Still just two mana bounce a creature. Yeah, I don't know why I've never played this one. I guess I just don't run across it that often. I don't want to say, like, the card disadvantage thing matters, but, like, the card disadvantage things matters. Like, matters, yeah. all of the blue cards you're playing are spectacular cards, and the feeling of having to pitch any of them to force of will, force of negation, yeah. like, that already hurts, and having to lose out in, on even more does not set you up for success. Like, the after you cast force of negation and force of will consecutively, you're yeah. way down on cards, and, like, if your win condition is on the stack and I'm losing my thought process as I'm saying this but I think what I'm saying still makes sense <laughs> no no it's a, it does it's a, it's a great card I, know, I, I hear where you're coming from Cody is another one it's great in Cody because you can bounce the Cody oh. for free afterwards you can bounce your own thing without any extra mana and sometimes you need to bounce the Cody so you can play your mana rocks and stuff like that like all the time you have all to the time you have to do that yeah this is like the best Cody bouncer it's great in Cody I think maybe I'm at a three out of five on this one. You're a three out of five? Okay. I think I'm somewhere on the same. I'm also going to give it a three out of five. And Look then this, you're going to give it... again. Nice. Teamwork. Wow. This is awesome. What do we think about Stern Dismissal? Ooh, I like Sorcery that. bounce creature or enchantment? I think it's an instant. It's an it's instant. An instant. Yeah. Oh, what does yeah. it bounce? Creature or enchantment? Creature or enchantment. Okay. Yeah. For one blue. For just one blue, yeah. Return a creature or an enchantment and opponent controls. So this is not a dockside bouncer. So this is if your combo loses to Rhystic Study or Mystic or more. Like if you're food chain or something like that. Or, or interrupting an underworld breach if they're low enough on mana. Sure. Also yeah. true. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think this one's pretty darn good. Um, I, I mean, to me, it's like sort of in snap territory. Like, it's a little narrow, but it only costs one mana. Um, can hit your own stuff. So, yeah, pretty pretty solid. I, I'm a fan, even though I don't run it currently in any decks. I would say it's worse than snap, but not by much. I think it's still in that ballpark. Yeah, um, I would definitely agree. I like this in the non-red decks that lose to... Like, non-red food chain decks is really where I would say it's good. Yeah, definitely. Which is rough, because like, oh boy, now you don't have Squee, like... Right. But Atraxa is getting better. Food Chain uh, Ukuma has always been pretty decent too. So Yeah, Atraxa is maybe could play this one. Although I don't, I don't think you I mean it's just there's a, I feel like there's so many options. This yeah. isn't in the top three. And you can't bounce your own Atraxa. You can't with bounce it, your own so. Atraxa. But if you're in low colors, I like this a lot more. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I'm gonna give it a two point five. Two point eight for me. A two point eight. Okay. What are you giving it, Tyler? I, I think I'm also on the two point five train. A two point five train? Okay, that sounds good. Uh, you come to a river. I put this in because Jessica Ishai decks would play it. I don't know what for this when does. their Ishai would be at six. So you can choose one. You either bounce a non-land permanent uh, for one in a blue, or your other option is a creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, and can't be blocked until end of turn. Oh, so you put this like Jessica Ishai decks would play this so that if there was a Birds of Paradise in play and your Ishai was at six instead of seven, you could still Jessica Ishai people. For the win. I give this one a one. I'll just skip right to it. <laughs> it's only good in that one deck, and it's questionable that it's even good there. I think. I'm going to give it a point oh one out of 69 <laughs> is what I'm going to give it. Wait, oh, did, did you, don't, you, you don't have any yours yet? yet? No, I didn't do mine. I saved mine. That's right. unbelievable. See, you guys are all so I didn't know the rules. jealous. Zero out of 420 for me. No, it can't be that. You <gasps> already said it's a one. Yeah, I'll say I'll say a one as well. You're going to say gonna a one? I'm going to have to agree on that. Nice. Man, a lot I'm of agreeing. so glad. Yeah. It was lame. So glad that you got so <laughs> tilted when I got to use mine and save it up. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, it's benefit of making up the rules as you go along. Um, unsubstantiate. We alluded to this one earlier. Yeah, this one's good. Yeah, so this card, I, we have to look this up because this is a card we I, continuously I don't do. Return what a target it says. creature or spell to its owner's hand. Yeah, that's period. what it is. Only creature. One blue. It can't bounce other stuff. Yeah. I've thought for a while it could, could bounce other stuff. It can't. Can target your own stuff. It could bounce. But cannot any, bounce non creatures. Yeah. Any spell from the stack. Any spell from the stack. Yeah. Only creatures, creatures from on the, the board. Play. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I think this one's great. I think it's worse than Chain of Vapor and Cyclonic Rift, but I think it's in the territory for like your third option. It's around where Snap is. I think I gave Snap a 3.5. I think this is around the same. You know, I'm going to give it a four. I ran this for a long time in Kinnon, and wow. I think being able to also be a remand is just enough flexibility. Like, I did I did eventually cut it, but I ran it for more than a year in Kinnon, and I, I really liked it, and I was sad to see it go, even though I needed the slot. I'm going to give it a 2.5. You don't like this card. I never find room for this card, and I feel like everything that it does is just outclassed by other cards that I already play. Yeah, it's hard. I, I really want my bounce supposed to be bouncing non-land permanence not just creatures and if they're creatures i feel like they need to pay me back or be free in mana and so this one doesn't always see the cut for that reason i will say i think this is definitely a spell that is much better in decks that are trying to go slow and win in the later game than it is in decks that are trying to go fast definitely they also no true. Yeah. defensive decks decks that are trying to not lose to ad nauseum in the first couple turns this one is a great one for that yeah I think. but if you're gonna lose to ad nauseum on the following turn then it's it doesn't really do too much for you right you have to be it able to capitalize to on that tempo yeah yeah. Okay. Cool. Geist Wave is next. I forgot about this. Oh, yeah. I think this is also one of the worst ones that are out there. So this one can bounce, I think, anything, but it also draws you a card if it's a permanent you own. Right. So right. this is and it costs a, two? Two. It costs two, yeah. So this is a Dockside Bouncer that can draw you a card. I like this in Krak and Sakashima. If you can do it a couple times, bounce it and recast and bounce it, recast it. You can be recasting your dark side, drawing cards, helping you get through the win. If you have a lot of Krak's in play, it gets really, really good. I think outside of that deck, though, it seems a little stinky. It's kind of stinky outside yeah, of that. I yeah. think that there's plenty of better options that you have. I'm going to give it a one. Yeah, if you want to be bouncing your dark side, making that spell be free or pay you back in mana with a snap or a snapback is just better, I think, than getting the card. I'll call this a 1.5. Yeah, I'm in the territory. Great in Krak, though. Okay, you guys like it more than me, so that's okay. Is Narset's Reversal a bounce spell? If Roman's oh. a bounce spell, Narset's Reversal is a bounce spell. Yeah, I said that. I'm not sure I really <laughs> think Roman is a bounce spell. It's All right, yeah. well, now that we're... Bounce spell. I'll, I'll delete that now that we're going back on that. Yeah, I think Sorry. we can delete it. I'll just it. be yeah. like, yeah, no, I was right. Roman wasn't a bounce spell. Yeah, all right. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Aether Spellbomb 
is next. Oh, an artifact. That is, is a bounce spell. An oh, artifact. Yeah. It does bounce things. Yeah. Really good only if you have artifact synergies going on, though, right? Yeah. And even then, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. It still costs two to do the bounce. I, I, w- I would say the only deck where I feel like this is really strong is Muldroth. Uh. Mm, okay. Sure. Yeah. What about Joyra? Joyra. Oh, yeah, oh, it's not in Joyra. Joyra. I think it's yeah. good in Joyra. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. We get it comments all the time that say, you guys didn't talk about Joyra, so I'm glad that we're talking about Joyra there today. We go. This right. card's great in Joyra. Yeah, this is. Um, I, I didn't play it in Urza. I think a lot of times you're in blue, like, already, so you have options for the best bounce spells. Um, but, like, it's much better in Joyra when it can just draw you a card, too. So I would put this one at, like, a 1. In specific decks, it's playable. Outside of that, and even in those decks, it's not the best thing ever. It's just like it's playable. I'm gonna give it a 1.5. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I'm on 1.5. 1.5. All right, that sounds good. Here's uh, here's a fun one that I forgot until way at the end of my list here. Ottawara, the Soaring City. Ooh, this one's great. This oh. one's so good. Definitely a bounce spell. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is oh. Tyler realizing oh. he does play four bounce spells. <laughs> yeah, you said I would. You said, you said I would anyway. I, yeah. I totally forgot about this card. Definitely. It's, yeah, so well, idea, innocuous. Yeah. Hang on. We can't call it a bounce spell, though. That's it's true. It's a bounce ability. It is a bounce ability. Bounce ab- uh, I guess that's true. But it counts. So it's, I would it's count a bounce it. Yeah, it's, it's a bounce spell. It does it's the spell. same thing. Uncounterable. So fucking good. Oh, yeah. It's the one I always forget about. I You get, like, your Grand Abolisher or your Ranger Captain of Aeos in play. Even your silence on the stack. You feel so, so good. And then, nope, all of a sudden, your Underworld reaches back in your hand. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of legendary creatures, a lot of partners going around. This is oftentimes two or even one mana. I feel like most of the time it's three mana, but there's still a lot of times where it's less than that. And even at three mana, this it being... It still feels great because it says yeah. it's uncounterable and you can cast it through silence or any of those effects. Boom, exactly. This is an easy five out of five. Also, and it casts your spells when you need it to, right? which you, is insane. If you mulligan really low, your bounce spell can now cast your Mystic Remora to get you out of the mulligan or something like that. Like when you need it to be a land, it'll be a land. Card is so good. Probably better than anything we've talked about. I would Honestly, say... Honestly, I gave it a 4.99. I'm giving it a six out of five. If I can't change the toughness, I can change the power. Six out of five, I give it. Right, that sounds good. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say 5.5 out of five. It is better than Rift or, or Chain of Vapor yeah. even pretty much the, without question. Yeah. yeah, even in the four or five color decks, it's just cease play. Even like, it just it, it doesn't matter. Right? It's still you good. never cut this card anymore. Right. Yeah. You, ne- you never cut it. If your commander is blue, it's there. All of these other cards, you can argue cutting at some point depending on your so. deck. Yeah. yeah. This one, I, you can't tell me that it was a good Maybe idea a to cut it. Maybe a five color deck would want to cut this card, but be, even still, like, don't think of it as a land. Just think of it as a spell. As a spell and yeah. I think you don't cut it then. My five color decks would still play this and Besaju because like sure. just having it as a spell option yeah too good here's also one this one's not an instant or sorcery oh. Sadisi's Faithful ooh oh. I like this one a little bit yo yeah any deck that is gonna I don't remember this card can so, you tell me yes so Sadisi's Faithful we didn't say what any of these cards did I mean we roughly did as we explained them being good or bad but we didn't read them well I gave uh, I didn't read them I gave like a brief synopsis yeah, of what it fun. does yeah people know Sadisi's Faithful is a blue mana zero four that has exploit and when you exploit a creature, you can return a creature to its owner's hand. So it's a sorcery speed bounce spell. It works because you can exploit itself and it gets it into the graveyard. Uh, but just having another body that you can sacrifice to things is really nice. Good against deafening silence. I guess it's not That's terrible. really why it's good. But yeah. like, what's the deck that wants this? Is this another Mildrotha, Mildrotha only or something with Luris? Maybe? Yeah, some, yeah, exactly. If you have synergies where you can reuse that creature body in some way, this gets good. Other than that, I don't think it's great. Besides being yeah. specifically great against Deafening Silence. I guess it's harder to counter. There's yeah, a little harder to counter. A little bit of something. It's kind that. of relevant. That's true, yeah. It opens up Mental Misstep, but you lose out on like Spell Pierce and shit like that. I think I'm still calling this a 1 out of 5, though. I would give it maybe 1.5. Well, no. Yeah, 1.5. I think 1's just not good. 1.5 is good in the right deck, so I'll give this 1.5. I'm going to give it a 1.25, kind of be in the middle of where you guys are at. Uh, Spend so much time on these stupid rating systems that make no sense. How would you rate this rating system? This rating system is 1 out of 5. out of 100, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's so good and helpful. Now I know what all these spells are. Yeah, great. I'll give it a cat out of yellow. You got yeah. it. Yeah. I would say a banana out of orange for me. Okay, that sounds good. Do we have another bounce spell? We have one more bounce spell to talk about. What's the last one on the list? This is a weird one, too. I feel like I'm going to tell you there's one more after this that you're forgetting about, but... All right, cool. Well, maybe we have two. Uh, It's Step Through. Oh, sure. (laughs) 
This card has wizard no, cycling for two mana, which no, is actually what it does. But for five mana, you can bounce two creatures, I think. I, sorcery speed. Yeah. <laughs> this card has never been cast for its full mana value to do its thing. No, but as a tutor, so it's not a bounce spell. Not a bounce but spell. But it's a bounce well, no, spell. It is a bounce it's spell. It's actually uh, technically primarily a bounce spell. But it's it's a tutor. It's but, a free tutor yeah. I mean, for the right as thing. As much as Ottawa is technically primarily a land, like I feel like you want to play it for the ability most of the time and playing it as a land is like ooh this, this is was the a opposite rough keep. you want to play it for the other ability as opposed yeah, to yeah, actually yeah, play yeah, it yeah. in the right deck though in Anala and whatever other deck would want to play this like a, a, a non-black based deck because it's too high pips for the ad nauseum that wants to find a wizard for its combo or a wizard for other stuff this card's fucking awesome oh yeah yeah okay but the bounce spell version of a five man is like the, no no so are we rating the card or are we rating the bounce spell which is what this podcast is about uh, if we're rating it as a bounce spell uh, maybe we have rating to do it both. as a bounce spell right, let's rate it as, a bounce, as spell. a bounce spell it's 0. 0.5 zero out of five yeah. this is All the right. only so we yeah. got a zero we got a 0. 0.5 and then i'm also gonna opt to give it a zero too great how uh, we rate it as a tutor I'm not rating it as a tutor. I'm not rating I, it as a tutor. We're, we're, we're <laughs> losing I refuse. content for another podcast. Okay. We haven't done that yet. Best tutors. Oh, that's a good one. Write there's, that down. Write that down. there's so much content that's out there that you can do. Yeah. I don't know why you would piss on someone and say, don't do content. Well, those are all of the bounce spells. Except after... for Tyler's bonus. Oh, yeah. What's your bonus one? I think we have a bonus bounce spell that is CDs playable in very niche circumstances. Venser Shaper Savant. You is, know, is I thought savant? about yeah. Venser. Venser Shaper Savant. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, the, it's four mana. That's a lot of mana. Yeah, I thought about Venser, but I opted not to put him on the list because it is four mana and didn't have a two mana thing that he could do on top of it all. Yeah. Here's like the reason I cycle. think it still belongs on the list. It is not the 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 best thing to do with Displacer Kitten, but it is a thing to do with Displacer Kitten. <laughs> this plus Displacer Kitten plus a mana rock like Mox Amber or something like that is infinite mana of that color. So I would say this is only salient in mono blue because when else are you really going to like this is the combo you're going to pick. Right. And it is still a worse infinite mana combo than Tidespot and Hullbreaker loops with rocks. Yeah. Um, it's harder to assemble. It costs more mana, all that stuff. But given that Displacer Kitten has held up, I think, since it's come out as like a pretty reasonable card that can do a lot on its own and Venser does not nothing on its own, I think it still gets a spot on the list. And I think I'm going to rate it higher than at least one of these cards. Okay. What are you going to give it then? I'm going to give it a one. I would give it a one too. Yeah, I think it's also a one. I'm giving it a 0. 0.5. I thought yeah. you were going to say like two or three for no, a second and no, I was going to be no. like, whoa. I have one. What about the card and there's two of these cards that have kicker that allows you to draw a card when you cast it? Oh, so it. blink of an eye blink and an eye. into the royal. Yeah. Are those yeah, considerable? Right. So those only bounce creatures. Yeah. Which also Venser... No, Venser can bounce any permanent. I feel like I've gotten this wrong before. Venser can bounce a permanent or spell. Well, that I know. I just meant like when... Yeah, I think a permanent. I think, like it's, a, I think it might be non-land permanent. Non-land permanent. Non-land sure. permanent. Yeah, that sounds right. And the card you said was... Well, you actually said it because I couldn't think of the name, but Blink of an Eye and... Oh, Into the Into Royal. The royal. Into the right. Royal. Yeah. They yeah. can either for two mana bounce a creature or for two mana and two mana kicker draw you a card on top. If Geistway is not good enough, these aren't good enough, I right? agree, yeah. If this, when I first started playing CDH, these cards were close, but I think at this point they're not. I still would give them like a 1, not not a 0 or a 0.5. I think i give them a 1 because sometimes maybe, but often no. I would give them a 0 because 0% of the time I've played them. Okay, fine. Yeah, me too. 0. <laughs> Fuck it. This card sucks. I hate this it. This card blows! Nice. Well, now that we've spouted out a bunch of facts... If you have an idea for how we can rate things next time, please say so in the comments. What was wrong with this system? This was <laughs> Nothing. Phenomenal. It was perfect and beautiful. I gave it a cat out of yellow. Did you not hear me? That's pretty piss poor on my scale. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you want to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Young Mox, AJL will say be, Baby Jeebus, Demon of Raz Grease, uh, and Quasha. If you want to find any of our merch, go to playtowinmtg.com. Huge shout out to our sponsors, Dragon Shield. Thank you so much, Dragon Shield. I said that really well for sponsoring the show. Check out the affiliate link down below. Follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content too. Do you want to say thank you so much for watching? Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Or listening. I don't have a fucking line now. $50 patrons? Yeah. How do we do this now? Everyone get behind me. All right, the $50 patrons. Here we go. Lutri's dad. Stashes. Mitchell Shepard. Justin. Man Solo. Nikola Marikovic. Steven Schlickdy. Big TP15. That green guy. Isaiah Briliski. Pedro. C. Jacob Depp. Sorry, I skipped you. 
Michael Ballou. Jan Wildfang. Thomas Boyno. Swampy McGee. Lauren Connell. David Nelson. Jormax. Jormax. I fucked that up. <laughs> that was great.